So if I had the choice between music and stoicism, it would be music. Welcome back to the Strong Stoic Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Tumblet. And today is a Stoic topic, as you probably tell by the title, Stoic Externals. And, you know, I don't do many episodes where I only talk about a Stoic uh, teaching or principle. Uh, but I thought this one was important for several reasons. You know, first, we tend to have these waves of understanding with ideas. Uh, you know, you may learn a philosophical idea, for example, and you may follow it half blindly throughout your life. And then, you know, there's a certain point where you realize uh, why it's so important. You, you start to understand fundamentally why it's so important. And then you think you understand it fully. And then, you know, a few years later, you realize, oh, actually, I had a very, very basic understanding of it even then. And these sort of waves of understanding, uh, they happen naturally through life in all kind, in everything, everything you do, everything you learn about. It happens to me in the gym, it happens to me in philosophy and everything else. And um, and so basically the point is, is that I've actually had one of these moments with stoic externals. And so I figured I'd, I'd share my uh, my perspective with you on this particular topic and, and hopefully explain it in a way that m- maybe will help you understand it a little bit better or, or more clearly. Uh, all that to say is that, uh, you know, it's 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 good. It's good to have these big waves of understanding. And in, in a sense, that's really what philosophy is about. It's it's digging deep into what really uh, what really matters and, and why it matters. And, and it's, 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 it's always exciting for me. I, I hope you have these moments, too, where you sort of gain new perspective on things, new angles, deeper ways of understanding it. And the other reason I thought this uh, episode was particularly important is because, you know, I understand that some people find this podcast because of the Stoic name. And, you know, this show has always been, to me, a podcast by an aspiring Stoic and not necessarily a podcast about Stoicism directly. And, you you know, if you've been a follower of me for some time, you probably know that. I, this isn't like a formal education on Stoicism. I am rather someone who, who really believes in Stoicism in many, many ways. And I'm trying to navigate life. And so in doing so, uh, the, the podcast is sort of a way for me to, to process that and to get it out into the world and sort of give, hopefully, the goal is to give an example of, of uh, how you can approach your life in a stoic way. Um, nevertheless, I thought it would be useful to have an episode here or there directly about stoicism. And so th- th- this, is, uh, this is such an episode. Before I get into the topic, I want to mention my Patreon. If you are a fan of me and you like my content and you want to support me, for the cost of a Frappuccino at Starbucks every month, uh, you can check out my Patreon at Brandon Tumblin. Uh, and it, it would help me out a lot. It, it would really help me out a lot, cover some of the costs of the podcast. Thank you to those who are already contributing. Um, the other th- way you can support me is on my Medium, which is uh, basically... A blogging website and so that's where I've been putting my articles you don't need to pay to see the articles I put out because you get two free uh, two free articles a week and I only do no more than two a week generally speaking so you're gonna be able to read all my articles anyway but if you do sign up for membership you can use my affiliate link which would be really helpful and uh, but it is it is free as well so let's talk about stoic externals Stoic externals, put very simply, are all the things that are, at least in Epictetus' words, which is a famous Stoic, of course, not up to us. Now, you all, you also may say something that is outside of your control, right? That's what a Stoic external is. So you, you think, you know, some obvious examples that people say all the time is, you know, money, right? Now, you can control how much money you make versus how much uh, uh, you work and so on, but it's, it's still an external. The weather what people say, food, you know, these are some basic examples, all externals, anything that's essentially not uh, part of your perspective and part of your your actions, anything that is really outside of your immediate control, that is what the Stoics mean when they say externals, everything that's not internal, you could say. And externals to the Stoics are indifferent, okay? Now, what does indifferent mean? Indifferent means they are not inherently good or bad. 
And what does inherently mean? Inherently means that uh, something that is outside of our control is not good or bad by its own nature. Meaning it doesn't necessarily have the tag of good or bad. It's indifferent. It's neutral. It has a neutral value. And so we as Stoics actually assign it a value based on how we use that thing. And so I'm going to go into some examples to some uh, examples here to make it really clear because I know this is this is a really confusing topic, which is why you sort of get these ways of understanding on such deep talk topics like this. So, for example, let's go through money. Money is not good or bad. Okay, so you you may think of externals as being uh, uh, neutral to the Stoic, right? And money is such an example. Money is neutral because uh, the Stoic uh, basically provides it with the meaning because you can take money. And you can do good things with it or you can do bad things with it. Okay, we all know this, of course. So the principal aim in regards to externals is to basically regard them without attachment. And this sort of reminds me of, uh, you know, Yoda and uh, Star Wars where they say, uh, you know, uh, don't get attached. That's sort of like the Jedi thing. Jedi and Stoicism, the, <laughs> the Jedi philosophy and the Stoic philosophy actually have a lot in common. Um, but basically, the principal aim in regards to, to externals from a Stoic perspective is not to get attached to them. Now, what does that mean? Don't get attached. What it means is that when you uh, engage with an external in life, you're not de- you're not using that as a validation for your happiness. It means your fundamental happiness in life and and meaning in life does not depend on those things. Again, fundamentally. Now, here's a really important clarification. That does not mean that you can't be happy by having externals. Okay? I'm going to say that again because that's that's really important clarification. Just because your happiness, your fundamental happiness, happiness in life does not depend on stoic externals does not mean that you can't be happy by having externals. Brownies are an external. But if you get one, they'll probably make you happy. I like brownies. Everyone likes brownies, right? So you get a brownie, you're happy with it. Okay, yeah, I'm eating this brownie. It's delicious. Let's put a smile on my face. The Stoics wouldn't say that, okay, um, this is just a brownie, so let me just dull my emotions and let's not enjoy this and it's just a bland old brownie. No, no. The Stoics would say, actually, if it's within reach, you should take a brownie and enjoy it, given that it's done in moderation. However, if you don't get a brownie, You cannot use that as a justification to be miserable. You cannot use that as a justification to be unhappy. So understand that you can take a brownie. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing unstoic about taking a brownie and enjoying it, given that it's within reach and you're doing it within moderation. However, understand that you don't need that brownie to be happy. You don't need it. That's what attachment is. That's what detachment is. Detaching yourself from externals, such as detaching yourself from the external of a brownie, uh, means that you're not you're not using that to make yourself happy fundamentally, but you can enjoy it in some way. It's a very common misconception and really a misunderstanding that pushes people away from stoicism because they think, well, if I can't enjoy money, if I can't enjoy my health or chips, uh, well, stoicism is not for me because I like to enjoy those things. But I'll say it again: externals are indifferent. All those things, money, health to a large degree, chips. These are all indifferent. So it really gets down to exactly how you are using them and why you are using them. And so let's get down to that because this is really, really important to understand. The most important concept that you need to understand in regards to Stoicism is that Stoicism is all about your character. Stoicism is all about developing who you are as a person. You know, And you can sum it up as being... What is the right thing? The Stoics would say, you need to do the right thing. That's what Stoicism is all about. So with that as your North Star, right? If, if, you, if you can imagine that what I want to be in life is a fundamentally good person, that's what I'm aiming at, then essentially what happens is everything that is outside of your control in regards to that manner, meaning your behavior, your attitude, your perspective, everything external, again, external becomes indifferent because it doesn't matter what it is. It matters how you are using it to cultivate your character. Okay. How you're using it. So if you're using money 
in a good way, in a virtuous manner than to stoicism. Money in that particular regards is good because it's cultivating your character in a positive way. However, if it is not, if you're using that money to buy drugs, it is then bad because you're using it to cultivate a bad character. So this is why it's really important, you know, like we talk about the dichotomy of control quite a bit. And th this really ties in with externals and indifference because they say, what's in my control? What's not in my control? That's a dichotomy of control. And that's why so many people come towards stoicism. But the dichotomy of control only really makes sense if your focus in life is a good character. Because if you were to say, okay, I consider money to be a good. Let's say your goal in life is to make as much money as possible. Then all of a sudden, everything that moves you towards that goal becomes good, right? Money itself becomes good. Um, business relationships where you are really profitable becomes good. Interest rates that work in your favor become good. But to the stoic who only cares about cultivating a positive character to do the right thing in the world, all those things are irrelevant because you have because they're outside of your control in regards to facing this North Star. So it's really it's a really important concept to to understand. It's a really important point. Now, at the same time, so I mentioned the brownie, right? Let's get back to the brownie example. Everyone gets so excited when I talk about brownies, right? Well, again, as a stoic, you can enjoy that brownie. Okay? They are indifferent. They are indifferent. However, What's interesting about the stoic view of externals, such as brownies, is that you actually are allowed to have preferences in stoicism, given that they're done in moderation and they're used in moderation, okay? So you're allowed to prefer money. You're allowed to prefer wealth over not having wealth. You're allowed to prefer being healthy over not being healthy. You're allowed to prefer eating a brownie, again, given that it's done in moderation, over never eating a brownie in your life, you're allowed to have that preference. But you are absolutely not allowed to tell yourself that you can be, that you can never be happy in life unless you have that brownie, unless you have that money, unless you have that fame and fortune, whatever it is you're going after. In the stoic view, that is not something that they allow. But you're allowed to have preferences. You're allowed to, you're allowed to move towards things. You're allowed to want things, given, again, that it's done in moderation. In the opposite light, you are actually allowed to be disappointed a little bit if you don't get a brownie at your grandmother's house. So let's say you go to your grandmother's house and she always gives you a, a nice big brownie and you enjoy that brownie. Well, if you go there and she doesn't give you a brownie, you're going to be a little bit disappointed at that. Now, the Stoics will call that an impression. So it's not that you're allowed to do it. It's that they think that in many ways, uh, that's outside of your control. So, you know, you'll be a little bit disappointed at that. Okay, I didn't get what I wanted. Um, but again, the Stoics would say, now you need to move on from that. Now you need to acknowledge that impression, understand that you can't change the impression itself, but you can change how you react to that impression and you can change how that develops your character moving forward. So it's not like a Stoic, if you get disappointed because you don't get a brownie, a Stoic would never like make you feel bad about that. They would just try and change your perspective so that it cultivates your character in a positive way. So you're allowed to have the damn brownie, but you're not allowed to blame the, your lack of happiness in life on the lack of the brownie. Let's go through some examples to hit this home because it's confusing, right? I know I know this is really confusing a co uh, topic because you may be thinking, well, aren't some things just inherently good? Let's take music, for example. If you ask someone on the street if music was good, they would say, yes. Hey, do you like music? Yes, I love music. However, um, well, first let me say, as a musician, I've been playing guitar since I was nine. Okay, this was one that I really struggled with with Stoicism because I always thought, well, I love Stoicism. How can music not be inherently good? How can it not be good in and of itself? And the reason is because, again, getting back to the Stoic concept of character, once you accept that character is the only good in life, and that's no small thing to accept, man. But once you accept that character is the only good in life, things only become good or bad in how they affect your character again. So let's say you're listening to a song and it's making you really courageous in life. It's making you want to go, uh, you know, apply for a bunch of jobs and, and go to that interview and have courage. The Stoics would say that is good because it's culti it, you're using it to cultivate your character in a positive way. However, what if you are listening to a song that is motivating you to go out drinking and partying and even break into a store and steal stuff? You know, the Mongolians, for example, used... Uh, they used to use music to pump themselves up for slaughtering innocent civilians. They used music to do that as a, as a catalyst. So you could say, well, 
how could music possibly be inherently good in and of itself if you can use it to cultivate a poor character? If you can use it to justify, or not even justify, but use it as a means to motivate you to do terrible things? How can music be inherently good? It's not. Music is not inherently good. The Stoics were absolutely right about that. And I'm saying that as someone, as a musician. And music is such a huge part of my life. I'm saying that as a musician. But the Stoics were right about this. Music is not inherently good or bad. Because you can use music to do great things, and you can use music to do uh, terrible things, right? Virtue versus vice. Now, another deeper level here. Let's go one level deeper. Because you could say, well, what you're saying, Brandon, strong Stoic, is that some music is good, and some music is bad. Some music encourages you to be courageous, and some music encourages you to rob a bank. No. Wrong. Why? Because you could take that same song that is talking about breaking into stores and stealing stuff, and you can actually use it as motivation to not do that. You can use it as motivation to, okay, this song is encouraging is, is encouraging. Uh, breaking into stores and you could say well how am I going to use this to cultivate my character well I'm going to use that as a way to not break into the store okay in the same way you can listen to a courageous song a song that's really pumping most people up around you yet you use it as an excuse to be ca to be cowardly so again it's not that some music is good or bad it's that all music is neutral all music is indifferent just like every single thing that is outside of your control is indifferent, given, of course, that good, good moral character is our chief aim in life. So many turn away from Stoicism, or they, they shy away from Stoicism, I feel, because they feel like they can't engage in the things in life that they are really passionate about. Like, listen, I love music. I listen to it. I play it. It's a huge part of my life. It's it's a part, I've integrated it to be a daily part of my life. And I also love other things like music, stories, fictional writing, art. I love these things. I think beauty is a huge part in life. Part of life, rather. But whether or not something is considered to be stoic or not, is if that music or that movie or that story or, or that art is making you a better person. Okay? So... You are allowed to have your cake and eat it too with Stoicism. You're allowed to, whatever it is that you want to do in life that you're really passionate about, you can be a musician and be a Stoic. I am that very thing. Now, the other beautiful part about this indifferent thing is that it actually works both ways, or rather three ways, you could say. That is, if something in external is indifferent, it isn't inherently Stoic in and of itself. It's not Stoic, but it's also not inherently unstoic. And it's also, again, indifferent so it can be neutral so what do i mean by that well let's say that you like me like watching dumb movies every now and then spoofs just stupid humor scary movie one and two and three and meet the spartans all these stupid movies i love watching those things it just it makes me laugh it's hilarious uh and i like to do that every now and then now it's pretty obvious that these movies likely won't help you cultivate your character right like they, they could again because it's indifferent they could but at least in the way that i use spoofs I don't really use, like I don't use them to make my character good. I just use them to enjoy myself every now and then, just to have a laugh on a Friday night. Therefore, it's not virtuous. However, it's also not a vice, given that it's not cultivating a bad character. Okay, so it's actually neutral. If I'm not using it to make my character good, or I'm not using it to make my character bad, it's neutral. So it's not quote quote stoic, but it's actually not unstoic. And in fact, if you do this in moderation. So, for example, I don't watch, uh, I don't watch like spoof movies all day, every day. Okay, I do it every now and then. I watch a stupid, dumb movie, and I have a good laugh, and I enjoy myself. That's actually stoic in the sense that you are allowed to enjoy things in life like that, given that it's done in moderation. So you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to eat that brownie. You're allowed to watch that stupid movie, even if it's not doing anything for your character. As long as it's not doing anything to cultivate a poor character, it's actually aligned with stoicism. But moderation is key there, okay? Moderation, that's temperance. That's the stoic virtue of temperance. So you're allowed to watch that dumb movie, and you can actually still be aligned with stoicism, given that you're you know, not using it as advice. So the final point I want to make here, no stoic would expect you to be perfect. In fact, a, a perfect stoic is called a sage. So by the very nature of being a stoic, accepts that you're going to make mistakes, okay? Yes, sometimes you're going to do things that aren't just. 
or wise. You're going to be a fool sometimes. Or maybe you'll be a coward someday. That doesn't mean that you're not a stoic. You're allowed to make mistakes as, as a stoic. It, it's built into the philosophy. In fact, it kind of means that you are a stoic because if you didn't make mistakes, you'd be a sage. Now, the important thing, of course, because you could say, well, that means everyone's a stoic. No, you have to accept that virtue is the only good in life and you have to move towards that. Your intentions have to move you towards that over time. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be the perfect human being right when you decide that. It's a journey. And the Stoics know that. So they encourage, it's not that they encourage you to make mistakes, but they accept that as part of the process. And you should too. Maybe Stoicism is for you. Maybe not. In my humble opinion, you know, I think that it's a philosophy that is aligned with virtually any walk of life, given that you think that doing the right thing is what you should do. Do you think that doing the right thing is what you should do? And do you think that you should cultivate a positive character over your life? Well, that's a very stoic standpoint. And given that you're willing to move towards that over time, because there's one thing to believe in that, and then there's the other thing to move towards it over time. So you do actually absolutely have to move towards it over time. So go forth, man. Listen to music. Watch dumb movies. As long as it's not a vice, and as long as it's done in moderation, you're okay. There's no reason why you can't be a stoic and also enjoy yourself sometimes. Because listen, man, I'm going to tell you flat out, if I came into Stoicism and I was told that I had to get rid of music in my life or I had to get rid of watching movies or I had to get rid of reading books, fictional books, I would not adopt Stoicism. I simply would not. These are huge parts of my life that are really, really, really important to me. They are in line with my nature. I am living according to my personal nature in doing those things. So if I had the choice between music and Stoicism, it would be music. Luckily, Stoicism doesn't ask you to make that choice. You can be a musician and be a Stoic. You can be a fictional reader and be a Stoic. You can be pretty much anything in life and be a Stoic, given, of course, that you're cultivating a good character over time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope it was a great episode for you. I hope you learned a few things about Stoic Externals. Uh, there's lots of ways you can support me. Check me out on my Instagram, on my Twitter, uh, of course, Medium, which is where I write my articles. Leave me a rating and review on wherever you're listening to this, um, Apple Podcast, iTunes. I would really appreciate it. That would help me out a lot. I'm not going to bug you guys anymore. Thanks again so much. Cheers. Until next time.